Gucci, Christina here. My husband told me that I better up my bread game due to some sightings of galactic menaces around town. You know, alien bread baking competition. I haven't seen any so far, but you just never know. Uh, today we're gonna be baking some pizza dough from scratch, and this recipe that I'm about to show you is enough for two pies. So you can either do two round pies, maybe 10 inch round, or you can do the big, um, what is it, 13 by 18 rectangles. So just remember, enough for two pies. And if you don't wanna do two pies all at one time, you can totally freeze all or one or however you wanna do it. So come on over and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, here we are. Here is, I measured out the flour already. And the flour here is 500 grams. I use all-purpose flour. Uh, if you don't have a scale, this would be equivalent to about three and three-quarter cups of flour. So I measured it in this bowl. Then we add our yeast. I have 10 grams of instant yeast. You can use active dry yeast uh, as well. Uh, but 10 grams of yeast, or is, which is equivalent to two and a half teaspoons. So we're going to put it in there. And then I have a mixture of salt and sugar in this bowl. You put in five grams of salt, which is about three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. And then you put in about three grams of sugar, which is three quarters of a teaspoon plus a pinch of sugar. And then you mix it all up. I like to mix the dry ingredients first. The amount of water you're going to be using is 300 grams of water or one and one third cups of water. I'm just gonna put it in like that. And that's it. It's a relatively dry dough, so don't worry if you see, you know, loose flour on the bottom. It'll get absorbed because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to let it rise for about two hours. And after that, it'll be, it'll be nice and cohesive. You want to cover it. Now, my favorite covering for these types of things is the good old handy dandy shower cap. I bet you never uh, heard of that before. And I love it because you can reuse them. Uh, you can wash them, and don't worry, this one's clean because I already washed my hair when I put it on. But you can use cling film or a, a tray or a pot cover, whatever, but... I like it because it's very easy. This is what it looks like in the bowl before two hours is up. We're going to let it sit there for two hours. And in the meantime, while I'm letting that sit, I'm going to make my marinara sauce which I also use as pizza sauce and if you miss that video I'll put a link in the show notes for you but uh, once you make this sauce you're really never going to want to buy jarred sauce again including pizza sauce so I'll see you back in two hours. Did you hear something? Okay, so it's been two hours and here's the dough after two hours. What you want to do now is you want to get um, a cutting board or you can even do this on your countertop and just lightly dust it with some flour and scrape out the dough onto the cutting board and it'll be more cohesive than when you um, originally mixed it and just you know knead it just for a few times I don't know ten times or something like that just to make it into a, a rough looking ball and if it sticks you can always add more flour I'm actually going to remove this I don't know why I put that there in the first place. all right this is it this is how we're gonna do it So it'll get more smooth as you knead it a little bit. And then once it gets a little bit smooth, you're gonna turn it into a ball. And what I'm doing is I'm just keeping my blades of my hands on touching the countertop. And I'm, I'm just um, holding the ball in the middle of my palms and then just twisting it 
just gently. I'm not squeezing or anything. I'm just twisting it gently so it forms a nice little circle. And then what you want to do is you want to take, um, if you have a, a scraper or a spatula or a knife, you just cut the ball in half. You can either weigh it to be accurate or you could just eyeball it. And because I'm cutting it in half because this makes two pies. And then what we're going to do is again just put it into a little ball like this. And if it's too sticky, you can always just flour just the surface. You don't want to put any more flour on the dough. Let's put it right like that. And then what you're going to do is just cover it with a towel. You want to keep them about four inches apart because the dough will rise a little bit. So keep them about four inches apart, cover them with a towel, and then we're going to wait for another 30 minutes while this is uh, does its second rise. We'll see you back in 30 minutes. All right, we're back after 30 minutes. These have risen very well, so I'm going to move this one over here. What you're going to want are two baking sheets. I have this rectangular one. I think it's 13 by 18, but you can also get a 10 inch round one. And first what we're going to do, let me get the dough out of here. We're going to oil the bottom of the pan. And I just take some oil like this, drizzle it on, and then rub it in with my fingers. If you're not confident that uh, the dough will not stick, I think I said that right, then you're gonna to wanna to put some parchment paper on the clean cookie sheet and then oil on top of it. But if you're confident that the oil will be, um, will allow your dough not to stick, then just do it this way. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a dough ball like this, and you wanna stretch it in the air first to elongate it. That's why it's e that way it's easier to stretch it out. And then just lay it in on the cookie sheet. Um, Obviously, there's a whole bunch of ways to stretch dough. You can, you know, throw it up in the air and throw it up against the wall, maybe. <laughs> but uh, you can push it here. Some people like to take it and stretch it like this. So if you're a dough stretcher, you can take it like this and just be gentle with it. Uh, a friend of mine taught me a little trick that I love to do. And it's to use a rolling pin like this. This, oh my gosh, I got this at the Dollar Tree. This video is not sponsored. I just want to tell you where I got it. The best um, rolling pin I've ever used, actually. And it fits perfectly in the little, in this tray. So what I just do is I take the rolling pin and I just roll the dough right in here and it makes it so much easier. Now you will get a little bit of spring back. Uh, if you want to avoid that, roll the dough out for a little bit, wait five minutes and then go back to it again because um, the gluten just doesn't want to stretch out at the moment. So you're just going to do this until, you know, it covers most of the cookie sheet. And after this is done, this is all ready to bake. So you can either pre-bake the crust for about 8 minutes at 475 or 500, uh, bring it out of the oven and then put your toppings on and then bake it again for another 10 minutes. Or you can put all of the toppings on all at once and then bake it between 15 and 25 minutes. I found that when I put the toppings on and I bake it with the toppings, the middle of the crust still stays um, mushy and soft, whereas the outside gets a little bit crispier. So really whatever your preference is, today I'm just gonna try to pre-bake the crust because I like my crust a little bit crunchy rather than mushy on the inside. And also if you roll it out and you get holes in it, you just pinch the holes back together. But I find that with the rolling pin, you get just an even, um, what is it? Just an even dough out in the pan. And don't worry if it doesn't cover all the corners. I mean, you can work on it if you want to. But pretty much you have it. And you don't really need a crust on this dough, so you don't need to fold it over and, and make a lip out of it. However, if you want to, you can do that too. But I just like a flat pizza. And then after you're done with this, you do it again with the other dough ball. And then that's it. So see how that rolls out just like that? And you don't have to put a lot of pressure on it either. And you constantly turn the pan as you go to stretch it out.
All right, so I have uh, rolled out my two doughs. This is the first dough, and I let it sit for about five minutes while I was rolling out my second dough. And as you can see, it rested, and the spring back is less than it was when I was trying to uh, roll it out the first time. So if you get frustrated while you're trying to stretch it out, stretch it out as much as you can, to, uh, let it rest for five minutes, and then come back to it. And then if you see any holes, which I just made right there, you just pinch it together. These are ready to go in the oven. Again, I said I'm going to pre-make these, I mean pre-bake them, because I want the crust to get extra crunchy in the middle instead of a little bit uh, soggy or moist. However, you don't have to do that. You can just put it in the, you can top it, put it in the oven for 15 to 25 minutes, um, anywhere between 475 and 500. I would check it after 15 minutes and then see how you're doing with that. What I forgot to tell you back there is that if you wanted to freeze the pizza dough, you mix it, you put it in a baggie that you either spray with oil or that you, you know, rub with your fingers with oil, and then you put it in the freezer right then and there. Once you want to use it, you take it out and you let it thaw on the countertop for maybe one or two hours until it becomes room temperature. And then after that, you cut it in half and then you spread it out on an oiled uh, pizza tray or a round tray, rectangular tray, whatever you have, and then that's when you put your toppings and all that other stuff on it. <laughs> Fire.